Okay, cool. So welcome. Here is the editing. We're doing editing for uh, uh, episode 84 of How I Make Music today, featuring a dude from Prince Edward Island in Canada called Lee Rosevear. And uh, yeah, today we're chatting, well, I chatted to him the other day, and uh, he's going to talk about his synthwave composition for uh, an audio drama called Great and Terrible. So here's the intro, and as we go, I'm going to be taking this pink stuff and uh, basically adapting it to all of the blue stuff, which is all the sound effects and the music and the colorful stuff. Pink stuff is the voiceover. So here's what it sounds so far. The piece of music we're listening to now in the background is called Discovery. Is it nice kicking with the snare? It's a retrowave soundtrack from a fiction podcast called Great and Terrible by A.R. Oliveri. Let's kick in with the snare. It's a retrowave soundtrack from a fiction podcast called Great and Terrible by A.R. Oliveri. Let's kick in. Oh, all right, hang on a sec. Just sorting out some Oliveri. stream Let's issues quickly. Oh. Sorting out some streamy stream issues. Oh, I've turned the display off. There we go. Stream cool. issues. All right, <coughs> from the top. Turn the display off. There we go. Stream cool. issues. So we. Um, all right, <coughs> from the top. Turn the display off. There we go. Stream issues. So we. Um, all right, <coughs> from the top. Turn the display off. There we go. Stream issues. So. Jeez, that is annoying. Okay. Today I'm editing episode 84 of How I Make Music, a podcast that I run, and I'm featuring. This episode features a guest called Lee Rosevear, who's a Canadian composer and radio guy, and uh, all of the pink stuff is his voiceover, all his interview material. Scored by. Zach Robinson from and all the blue stuff is the music that he sent me along with other influences like Jean-Michel Jarre and uh, other 80s influences that went into the making of this track that we're talking about uh, yeah as you can see I've done most of the sort of donkey work uh, splitting the usable audio from the unusable audio so I've taken out all the parts of his voiceover that I can't use and I've got these uh, regions here in Reaper called influences guitar bass line drums Rocket Max, and that allows me to quite easily reorder uh, some of the parts to make it a more engaging uh, interview experience. So, the fun stuff happens now. This is always my, my favorite part. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to import all of the stems, which I've got on this other screen, into, uh, let's just give one breaker there, cool. Import them all into separate tracks. Reaper kindly names them all for you. Uh, that looks like I've made a mistake. Let's undo that. First thing I need to do is duplicate a couple of these. Now we should have enough. Okay, let's try that again. Uh, what we're doing is importing all of the separate parts into Reaper so that when he starts talking about them, I can solo them out. When he talks about a single part, I can solo it out. Okay, so they should all be synced up. I hope they're all synced up. Yeah, they are. First thing I'm going to do is just link them all with the letter G to... Uh, kind of make them treatable as one. Oops. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Uh, beats positioning, right? Yeah, that's right. And then take them down sort of 12 dB uh, so that they don't all come blaring. Okay. All right, back to the start. Um, intro. The piece of music we're listening to now in the background is called Discovery. Some snare. A retrowave soundtrack from a fiction podcast called Great and Terrible by A.R. Oliveri. Cool. Today we'll break it down and get into what retrowave is and how and why this piece was put together. I just want to raise the volume of that last How and why this was put together. Was put together. I need to take that up because it's a little bit low. So I'm going to crank it 12 dB in the clip itself and then drop the level here. Why this piece was put together. That's too loud. Why this piece was put together. This piece was put together. Yeah, especially with mono phone audio, you need to crank everything. You're listening to How I Make Music. You're listening to How I Make Music, where audio drama composers get to tell their own stories. Every Wednesday, we break apart a song, soundtrack, or composition, and take a trip into how it was made. Yeah. My name is Lee Rosevear. I'm a composer in Charlottetown, PEI, in Canada, and this is How I Make Music. Okay, and then you can kind of start. Welcome back to start. How I Make Music. Welcome back to how I'm okay. What I what I like at this point, I've started to started to include audio drama clips under that statement. Welcome back to how I make music. So I'm going to take the one that I have, 
this audio drama clip. I think there's a space for it down. No, there isn't. Okay, let's just uh, duplicate that guy and I'm going to stick it in here. Another editing trick that I've started to employ is to uh, cascade the parts that you're using. All the clips that you're using, you'll notice there's a diagonal line sort of going from top left to bottom right. And that helps because you know that the further forward in time you are, the closer to the beginning you are, the higher up it's going to be. So you, you spend less time hunting for stuff, basically. So I'm going to stick that audio drama clip right where it belongs. One across and one down from the opening music. And I'm going to start to fade it in right actually as the music fades out and while he's starting to speak. Let's see if it sounds good. They are so wildly reductionist, it pains me. Welcome back to How I Make Music, episode 84. Discovery by me, Lee Rose. Thanks for listening. Great and Terrible is written to... Welcome back. So you mentioned there's like a one minute promo at the end of each episode. Lee Reductionist actually got invited. Serious? Crystal right in front of... Welcome back to How I Make... Welcome back to How I Make Music, episode 84. Discovery by me, Lee Rosevear. Thanks for listening in. Jane, answer me. Oh. <laughs> Terrible. Jane, answer me. Okay, that's quite of a... So i got a problem now, and that is that the music that I've just finished playing uh, fades out, and then the audio drama clip that I want to use to showcase the, where the music was used in its actual production is the same music so it fades out and fades back in it doesn't sound good so i don't have a choice i can't use the audio drama clip in its entirety what i can do is use this intro kind of thunder roll and then take this phrase jane answer me and then crank the reverb up audio drama clips in my project go to the music bus even though they're not music so i've got this reverb bus and i've recently discovered how to show the automation lanes inside the actual um, it just makes the layout easier. So what I'm going to do here is crank up the reverb. Oh, shit, I didn't know you could do that. Nice. You can just kind of draw. Huh. I wonder what that's good for. Um, is that like a resampling thing? I've got to figure that out. Uh, sorry, I just want to figure this out quickly. What happens if I do that? I don't know. Oh, whatever the selected clip is, it draws. So if I do that and I just... Draw it on there. Me, Lee Rosevear. Cover. That's incredible. I've never seen this before. Code 84. Discovery. Code 84. Discovery by me, Lee. All right, good to know. So control, click, drag actually just draws out whatever the selected clip uh, is playing at that time. Okay, we're at Jane. So I tend to jump around a lot, but hopefully you're following. Uh, there we go. I'm cranking the reverb, which is the effects reverb parameter on my music bus which should make her go, Jane, answer me, and sound like she's in a cave. Jane, answer me. No, nothing happening there. And that might be because of this routing. My mixer is on the other screen. Um, and that, but the routing is correct, which means that something's wrong with this. Uh, and I know what it is. The green line is the volume of this effects bus. So I have to take the volume all the way up. And now you'll hear it. Jane, answer me. Great and Terrible is a fiction. I like that. Jane, answer me. Great and Terrible is a fiction podcast about a high school student that stumbles upon an ancient curse that grants immortality. But there's a catch. Every full moon, she must kill someone, anyone, or she'll die. Okay, I've got an idea here. Uh, I'm going to contact the audio drama creator. Uh, via only. So I'm going to contact A.R. Oliveira and just say, listen, send, if you can, send me the voice, and then I'll input the voice there without the music in the background. It'll sound a lot better. Anyone or shall die. I like this, but not the anyone. So let's take anyone out. Oops, what have I done? Uh, I have created a monster. Okay, well, here's a good idea to show you. So you see all these automation lanes, the green, the turquoise, and the purple. If I click and go uh, show automation in, where is it? So you click on an automation lane and then you say show visible track envelopes in media lane. It's going to overlap the audio, which is much more like 
concise for editing and stuff. Only problem is you don't know what's what, but if you hover over it, you can see it says frequency band, frequency band one, frequency band four, envelope volume. So if you know what your lanes are that you're using, that's actually a way better way to do it. Okay, moving forward, uh, we are here. Jane, answer me. Thanks for listening in. Jane, answer me. That's Great and Terrible is a fiction podcast. You know what? Uh, let's just keep the music going then. To How I Make Music, episode 84. Discovery by me, Lee Rosevere. Thanks for listening in. Jane, answer me. Great and Terrible. A little bit of a pause needed here. Timing is important. I'm gonna give it another second. Podcast about. A- Thanks for listening in. Jane, answer me. Great and Terrible is a fiction podcast about a high school student that stumbles upon an ancient curse that grants immortality. But there's a catch: every full moon, she must kill someone, or she'll die. Or she'll die. And then maybe a clip of her actually killing someone. I was always a big fan of the 80s in general as being a child of the 80s and growing up and listening to all the pop music uh, that was around at the time, including a lot of um, My first introduction to the synth world was probably Jean-Michel Jarre, the Equinox album that I owned on an 80s. Okay, that's blaring, so let's bring that in sooner so we can... Kill someone or she'll die. die. I was always a big fan of the 80s in general as being a child of the 80s and growing up and listening to all of the pop music uh, that was around at the time, including a lot of the synth artists. Um, my first introduction to the synth world was probably Jean-Michel Jarre, the Equinox album that I owned on an 8-track, played it a lot. Played it a lot. Take a listen. Let's get it. take a listen. At the end of every... Uh episode, I'll ask the contributors to uh, record some ad-libs, not ad-libs, but uh, pickups. These. <coughs> take a listen. Here, take a listen. Here, here, take a listen. There we go, got it. Let me get it back to here, and we stick it where it belongs, which is right here. I owned on an 8-track, played it a lot. Here, take a listen. I owned on an 8-track, played it a lot. Take a listen. Uh, then moved on to. Actually, I like it without. Played it a lot. Listen. Just pref- just like that. Okay, now these, these uh, YouTube rips tend to be blaring because they're commercially mastered, so I always got to take them down like 25 dB. Uh, then moved on to listening to pop. Now, I like to time these transitions and make them a little bit like sort of musical. Oh, there is a problem. I've forgotten to turn down the reverb send on this part here. So actually, Jean-Michel Jarre, uh, let's get you back down where you belong. One or she'll die. Um, my first introduction to the synth world was probably Jean-Michel Jarre, the Equinox album that I owned on an 8-track, played it a lot. Uh, then moved on to, uh, then moved on to listening to pop songs that were hits at the time, such as Harold Faltermeyer's Axel F. Uh, then moved on to listening to pop songs that were hits. Okay, let's make this more of a moment. Uh, so I'm going to fade out Jean-Michel Jarre with more reverb. And I, that was a cool way to do this that I can't seem to find anymore. Dish, 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 dish. Here we go. That's better. A little bit earlier. Uh, then moved on to listening to pop songs that were hits at such as Harold Faltermeyer's Axel F. Uh, Paul Hardcastle had a big hit with the song 19, which led me to the rest of his songs. Uh, Fly By Night by him was one that I listened to a lot that has a big influence on the way I write music. Music. On the way I write music. Take a listen. The way I write music. Take a listen. Okay, we'll have to do a little bit of a volume boost there. Um, okay, another way we could do this, instead of dropping these uh, source audio levels down, what we could do is what I should actually be doing. And that is to adjust the sidechain compression um, 
threshold. So let's just get to that. It's going to be under music recomp. Here it is. So does Harold Faltermeyer? Notice when the voice comes in, the music goes down. Does Harold Faltermeyer's Axel? Loud. Uh, then soft. moved on to listening to pop songs that were That's hits great. at the time, Please such as Harold, Please Jean Michel Jarre, or Shell Dye. I was always a big fan of the. Cool. I should have done that in the first place. All good. Let's take that up to 15 dB. Boom. As being Loud. Okay. Yeah, I dig uh, this track. I've actually just gone and got that track for my own DJ collection because it's banging. And it's from like the 80s. Influence on the way I write music. Take a listen. Take it's a so listen. groovy. It's like, I don't know, Miami or something. Yeah, I write music. Take a listen. I almost don't want it to end, but I'm afraid the editing must continue, everybody. So, moving on. Uh, the end of Paul Hardcastle Fly Me. What is it what's it called? Take Me Away. It has a big influence on the white by him, was one that fly I love. Fly by night. <laughs> The going. entire retrowave genre I rediscovered in 2012 or so by a, an artist named D.A.D. He put out an album called... Let's see if we can do a mix on these two because that would be pretty cool. What are the two by a, an artist named D.A.D. He put out... Okay, there's a snare, so let's try and sync up this snare. This is where it gets to like musical, musical editing. By a, an artist... Okay, I want to find the four... The entire retrowave genre I read genre I rediscovered in one, 2012 two, or so three, four, by uh, one, an two, artist three, named DAD. He put out an album. Uh, AD. He put out an No, wait. I've got an idea. D. He put out an album three, called four. The Con There you go, you see there's the, the concert. There's the one. Now we want to find the one on here. And one song on there. Okay, let's get DAD. Halfway through the track. There's the one. Okay. Now we've got a one meets a one. Now we just got to do the fine tuning of the same. Put out an album called. We definitely don't need the voice for this. It's going to be a bit slow, I think. Yeah, it's just thought. It's not a bad cut. Yeah, now this guy needs to come down a good, whatever, 10 dB. Uh, let's take it down to minus 15. Because this DAD one is a re, it's a, a recent release, a recent commercial release versus the one from the 80s. It's obviously going to be louder because everything has been getting louder progressively since like the 60s. Two, three, four. I think we might be able to do a cut. Why don't, why don't we do a little special moment here? I'm going to add an EQ to uh okay let's see i've got a screen open not the screen and i'm going to add an eq to so it's on this one now let's do um we need to enable the low cut uh not low shelf high shelf not high shelf, yeah, high shelf can turn into a, okay, so channel one, and then we want to enable the high shelf as the cut happens, so this is like, or disable it, sorry. Okay, fine. All right. <clears throat> It's channel four. Okay, I'm on the wrong one. Okay, that's fine. Have to be a high pass. Yeah, that's kind of like a DJ cut. <clears throat> Although I prefer it to go from the other way around, to be honest. Clear and delete this. I'll leave it open, fine. Uh, now we want to get. What I'm trying to do is create a high pass filter. Gain high shelf, and at this point we want to. Sp there you go. That's what I'm after. Nope, that's not what I'm after. I'm after. It mustn't be a high shelf. Um, tripping out here, man. Okay, disarm all track envelopes. 
cloud will track all the loops. Let's try this again. What we want is a high cut, uh, so a low pass filter. And I want the low pass filter to. Oh, uh, that's right, I have the gain instead of the frequency. The low pass filters gain. Okay, no, we want a high pass filter, not a low pass filter. Let's try that again. Uh, Oh, right, I haven't actually created it, that's why. I have to first create a high-pass filter and then go to frequency high-pass 4, and that's what I'm after. There you go, that's quite a nice little intro too. Yeah, let's do it like that. We're going to bring that boogie in, son. Yeah. Let's just see how this sounds. Um, such as Harold took the big influence on the way I write music. Take a listen. Do, 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 do. Okay. Into a lot that has a. Uh, take a listen. Okay, I want to move this guy up. So. Uh, then moved on to that has a big influence on the way I write music. Take a listen. Okay. On the way I write music. Uh, Fly by night by him was one that I listened to a lot. That has a big influence on the way I write music. Take a okay, listen. Fly by night. By him was one that I listened to a lot. Take a listen. listen. To a lot. Take a listen. There you go. That's a nice little moment for the cut. So here we go. Lot. Take a listen. Just a little bit late. Do -do -do -do. Take a listen. And we want this to be maxed out. So. Listen to a lot. Take a listen. Fly by night by him was one that I listened to a lot. Take a listen. Take a listen. Take a listen. Take a listen. Got to bring it in a little bit more. Uh, Paul, F. Uh, Paul Hardcastle had a big hit with Axel F. Uh, Paul Hardcastle. Gonna lose the uh. I'm just getting a bit of Axel F. Paul Hardcastle had a big hit with the song 19, which led me to the rest of his songs. Uh, Fly By Night by him was one that I listened to a lot. Paul Hardcastle had a big hit with the song 19. Okay, we can move that song 19. Fly By Night by him was one that I listened to a lot. Take a listen. Fly By Night by him was one that I listened to a lot. Take a listen. Okay, now we can actually have some breathing room, so... What I'm doing is I'm trying to time nine. the vocals. Castle had a castle had a little F. Paul Hardcastle had a big hit with the song 19. Fly by night by him was one that I listened to a lot. Take a listen. There you go. Now we've got the time. Okay. Uh, right. So you can see what kind of like detail goes into this work when you want to get it right. When you want to do a good job of the, the editing, which is mostly timing, actually. That I listen to a lot. Take a listen. That's fine. I like that. And at the very end here, we want to do the opposite and basically raise the, the filter. He put out an album called The Construct, and one he put out an album called The Construct, and one song on there in particular called Love Will Make You Stay really caught my ear and went. On and one song on there, and one song on there in particular called Love Will Make You Stay really caught my ear and went. Ear and went. Day really caught my. My ear. Day really caught my ear. Really caught, yeah. really caught my ear. On there in particular called Love Will Make You Stay really caught my ear. Ear. What is this? My ear and went. What is this whole retro. Retro wave thing? I'm not. Think. Wave thing. Wave thing. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What is the... Okay, that's cool. Just a little bit loud. Okay, bringing that down. What is this whole okay. album called The Construct? And one song on there in particular called Love Will Make You Stay really mm -hmm. caught my ear and went, what is this whole retro wave thing? Yeah, what is this whole retro wave thing? Thing in it. Uh, what I'm thinking here, if I'm, just for kicks, is to uh, firstly show the automation and then yeah, I'll just smash it up here and see how that sounds. So 
Now I've got not music, sorry, I want the vocal effects to be pumped over here. So I'm going to take the delay. I'm going to add a point to it. Oh, come on, man. There we go. Retro wave thing. Or retro wave thing. And again, we've got the volume that needs to come up. So here we go. Boom, boom. What is this whole retro wave thing? Retro wave thing. Okay, I think that's reverb. What is this? Envelope delay. Oh, that's the timing of the delay. So that should actually just be up the whole time. Boom. And then this is the feedback of the delay. So that must come up over here. I'm trying to create a delay effect on his voice. A retro wave thing. Yeah. This whole, what is this whole retro wave thing? What is? And now there's an issue, which is the filter is still quite low. Uh, so we're going to add that, pump that up. What is this whole retro wave thing? No, that's not the one. What is this whole retro? Okay, what is the flanger? So many filters on here. I don't know what the heck is going on. What is this whole retro wave thing? Okay, why don't we do ourselves a favor and get this chain FX Vox. We don't need that filter. What is this whole retro wave thing? Thing, 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 thing. That's kind of what I'm going for is thing, 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 thing. Okay, well, wet protoverb, we can take that down. Uh, we don't need, we don't need a retro wave thing. The nitty gritty kids, hey? Uh, wait, yeah. Retro wave thing. Retro wave thing. Okay, I think the, oh, I think I've got it. The tempo delay is way too high. Retro wave thing. And retro wave thing. 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 Can't get it to work. Retro wave thing. Because why? Retro wave thing. Um. Retro wave thing. Wave. I put dry must be zero. Retro wave thing. And then what's the reason for it not? Oh, it's a six second delay, that's why. Okay, so that's way higher than it needs to be. Feedback's gonna turn into an infinite loop. We don't want that. Here we go. Alright, so that goes all the way down. Retro wave there thing. There you go. Okay, cool. Retro wave thing. Retro wave thing. Retro wave thing. What is this? What is? Okay. Ping pong width. We want it like that. Retro wave thing. Retro wave thing. Okay. Now we can take this down even further to like 60, uh, 200 milliseconds. Retro wave thing. That sounds a bit more. What is, what is this is whole retro wave, wave thing? I'm not, I'm not I'm like, 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 I lived through this once already. So. Yeah, that's it. Now we're getting a bit spicy. What is, what is this is whole retro, retro wave thing? thing? I'm not, not I'm like, 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 I lived through this once already, already. So it's kind of cool to have it to go through it again. Yeah. See, I want to get more into vocal, like whack of vocal effects on this show. Psychedelic. That's why I changed the intro title to like, instead of investigate the insights into how it was made, I've changed it to take a trip into how it was made because this, this, to be honest, no one knows or really, you know, cares too much about a guy called Lee Rosevere in the same way that no one cares too much about a guy called John Bartman's work. It's about an audio listening experience. It's about giving something to people, whether or not they're musicians, and uh, letting them escape their boring lives for a minute. That's what it's about. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Let's see how it sounds. On there in particular called Love Will Make You Stay really caught my ear and went, what is this whole retro wave thing? Yeah, it's good, but I just need to crank it up a little bit in volume, yeah. Uh, what is this whole retro wave thing? Wave. I'm going to... Wave thing. I'm going to crank up the feedback to... Just there's definitely way too much going on here, though. I need to clean this up a little bit. The tempo is fine. The feedback can turn into a 
This whole retro wing thing. That's the problem with delay. This whole retro wing thing. That's the problem with delay. It's gonna start to really crank up unless you are very in control. What is this whole retro wing thing? Okay, that's cool, except it's just a bit late. Here we go. This whole retro wing thing. Good, but now not late enough. This whole retro wing thing. Whole, whole retro wing thing. Whole retro wing thing. Retro wing thing. Whole retro wing thing. This is a whole retro wing thing. It's like, it's like, I lived I through this once already, so it's kind of cool to have it to go through it again because it's just, you know, firing all the nostalgia synapses. Oh, you can turn the volume down. Yeah. It's like, I lived through this once already, so it's kind of cool to have it to go through it again because it's just, you know. It's like, I lived through this once already, so it's kind of cool to have it. It's like, I lived through this once already, so it's kind of cool to have it to go through it again because it's just, you know, firing all the nostalgia synapses. It's like, I lived through this once already, so it's kind of cool to have it to go through it again because it's just... Mm -hmm. I lived through this once already, so it's kind of cool to have it to go through it again because it's just... To go through it again. Kind of cool to have it... To go through it again. To go through it again. So it's kind of cool to go through it again because... So it's kind of cool to go through it again. Cool to go through it again because it's just, you know, firing all the... Go through it again because it's just, you know, firing all the... Again because it's just... You know, firing all the nostalgia synapses. Because it's just firing all the. Okay, I've got an idea. Let us sing first. Because it's just again, because it's just. You know, firing all the nostalgia synapses. Let it, let it do a bit of singing in between. Again, because it's just. You know, firing all the nostalgia synapses. Those gaps, my friend, are what make this show what it is. It's like these pauses in between the verbal diarrhea that most podcasts seem to fall victim to. Breaks. Breaks. And I can kill all of these lanes, make it clean it up a bit. Nice. I do like that. Cool. But yeah, I was really taken with the whole sound and how it's changed and what it was doing in the current time and how it can sound somewhere in between the past and the future at the same time. So I was really taken with that and start so I was really same time. So I was really taken really same time. So I was really taken with that and started listening to a lot of it. I was really taken with that and started listening to a lot of it and then decided that the past and the future at the same time. I was really taken with that and started listening to a lot of it and then decided that I think I'm going to try making some of this music. I think I am too, bro. This, this guy has inspired me to get a little bit more retro. So retro wave is a bit of everything. Okay, we've done enough of this track now. Uh, so we're going to do a fade out and then also... A nice long music uh, channel reverb swell. Okay, wait, I've got to figure this out. Um, you add a dot, you add a point like that. And now when I want to add another point, it doesn't let me. And I used to be able to do this, but I don't know how anymore. You gotta actually grab it. It's so annoying. Okay. So retro wave. Should we do one of those filter cuts? Actually, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna take this EQ from that earlier. DJ cut, the DJ mix sort of moment that we created. 
and I'm going to add it to the music bus, which means I now have the ability to do a high pass um, transition. Set it as the start down there. I love this music. No, what have I done wrong? I love this music. Oh, I'm on. There you go. I love this music. It's me too. But uh, frequency low pass four is visible. Why is it not obeying? Not obeying. Why is it not obeying? Why oh why is it not obeying? Good morning. I am trying to fix a small problem here. The problem is that the EQ frequency of the low pass filter, which is, ah, I haven't actually added it as an automatable function. How oh, very irritating. Let us do that now by change low shelf to uh, high pass yeah that's it now it should say uh, oh I'm on the wrong there we go that explains it there we go done this can die and this the music channel we need to add only the most recent one, which is a high pass frequency. There it is. Okay, what I'm trying to do is cut this. I'll try making some of this music. So Retrowave is a bit of. So Retrowave is a bit of everything, the past and the future all brought together with the sounds of the 80s, but a lot of them have been amped up for current mm -hmm. times. Uh, they're mostly associated with movies from the 80s, like the action, sci-fi, or the horror movies like... So Retrowave is mm. a bit of everything, the past and the future all brought together with the sounds of the 80s, but a lot of them have been amped up for current times. Okay, this is kind of weird, this episode. It's not really focusing a lot on the um, on the audio drama. It's more focusing on, you know, the sound of the 80s. A bit of everything, the past and the future all brought together with the sounds of the 80s, but a lot of them in sci-fi or the horror movies like... Uh, they're mostly associated with movies from the 80s, like the action, sci-fi, or the horror movies like... Gosh, I'm going to reset this. ...movies like the action. It was just the soundtrack, like Giorgio Moroder did a lot of scores for movies movies from the 80s, like the action, sci-fi, or the horror movies like... Like what? The Stranger Things... Stranger Things. Stranger Things soundtrack really brought the retro... Uh, the retro wave sound... Uh, Really brought the retro wave genre. Mm -hmm, really brought the retro wave genre. Track really brought really brought the retro wave genre. Back. Track really brought the retro wave genre back or back. Yeah. Genre. Back. <laughs> the soundtrack really brought the retro wave genre yeah. back. Okay. It was just the soundtrack, like Giorgio Moroder did a lot of scores for movies in the 80s, and he's also a pioneer of that kind of sound. Uh, it was used in the Stranger Things soundtrack, and more recently in Kung Fury, which... Okay, um... Back. Back. And more recently in Kung Fury, which is actually scored by Zach Robinson from DAD. I think he's one of the co-composers on that. So... And that's become a huge hit for him and also bringing that sound even more into the mainstream than it was before. Even more in, and even more sound, even more and also bringing that sound even more into the mainstream. He's one of the co-composers on that. I'll okay, I've got a Kung Fury moment, which I haven't actually got yet. But that should be cool. 
brought the retro wave genre back. Right. We'll work out what to do there, and that's the end of the influences section now. Um, on to, let's start with baseline. So this song that uh, Discovery uh, started with the, the main melody that's heard off the top after the big synthy ambient intro. So some of the most common instruments that are used in Retrowave are huge snare drums. Okay, let's add a huge snare drum at this very moment to demonstrate what he means. And I know how to do that. There is a huge snare drum right here. I'm going to use the very end one, I think. This guy here. Why well, have we got snippets? I don't want snippets. Okay, there. And now we mute everything with, with a zero. Right. Than it was before. Just machine gun sound. Okay, kill the automation on the music channel. And where is he talking about snares? At the beginning of. Okay, so to the main. First Kung Fury, and then we'll start this section here. I think we can shift it all up, can't we? Yeah, there. Cool. So some of the most so some of the most common instruments that are used in Retrowave are huge snare drums. Okay. So some of the most common instruments that are used in Retrowave are huge snare drums. Lots of reverb, which I am always a big fan. So some of the most common instruments that are used in Retrowave are huge snare drums. To show this, yeah. Okay, uh, the reverb channel. Back to the reverb channel. Not a reverb, he says. So, lots of reverb, which I am. Op okay, one small thing I have to. Lots of, lots of reverb, which I am always a big fan of. Um, retro synths like the ones um, retro synths like the ones from the 80s is okay, I kind of want to make this a bit more smooth flowing lots of reverb which I am always a big fan of um, retro synths like the ones from the 80s is always a big fan of um, retro synths like the huge snare drums this has to come forward a bit. Snare drums. Lots of reverb. Move that forward. Lots of reverb. Which There's a bit of a pop on the beginning of this clip. Lots of reverb. Lots of reverb. Which. Where, or is it here? Lo I am always. Lots of reverb. Which I am always a big fan of. Lots of reverb. Which. Lots of. Re lots of reverb. Which I am always a big fan of. Um. Are huge snare drums. Lots of reverb, which I am or huge snare drums. Lots of reverb, which I am always a big fan of. Um, retro synths, like the ones from the 80s, is. Retro synths, like the ones from the 80s, is. From the 80s. Let's just get another snippet of a synth in there. He's got. Uh... Futura, which just gets a mention later, so we've got we've got space to give it a bit more room here. Retro synths, like the ones from the eighties. I'm always drawn to spacey or ambient. I do a lot of ambient music on the side, so that kind of colored how I approach this. So my Okay, you mentioned spacey or ambient. Do we have a spacey or ambient pad to back up what he's saying? That would be nice. Uh, intro, ops, bass, guitar, synth, melody, two. Let's try that. Um, that's not ambient. Synth main. Yeah, that looks a little bit more ambient. Okay, let's try that. Authentic is the current retrowave problem or ambient I do a lot of ambient music so that kind of colored how I approach to spacey or ambient I do a lot of ambient music on the side so spacey or ambient I do a lot of ambient music on uh, not 
cool thing I've realized is what you can do just to clean up your workspace. Why is this guy so? Uh, you can open up the track manager and I the um, track manager and you can just hide some of the stuff that you've already used. I haven't used that. Equinox. Yeah, all of these things, intro theme. Just kind of clean it up a bit, make it easier to work with. Okay. To, I'm always drawn to spacey or ambient. I do a lot of ambient music on the side. So that kind of colored how I approach this. So I do a lot of ambient or ambient. I do a lot of C or ambient. I do a Once again, I'm going to remove references to ambient. him and his own ambient. I do projects. And I this isn't about him ambient. or even me which is my why my voice isn't in it or ambient it's about an experience it's about a listening experience that's pleasing ambient so that kind of colored how i approach this so my take on retrowave isn't is kind of colored how i approach this so my take on retrowave isn't is authentic as the current retrowave probably it's got a little bit more of a an ambient side to it but that's just but that's just how it comes out with me because that's where all the influences are in like brian eno's music and other things all just kind of how it comes out with me because that's where all that's where all the influences are i don't mind or ambient little as little talking as possible because that's where all the influences are in like Brian Eno's music and other things all just kind of mush together. Now what I can do is um, I'd like to get into the track itself. We'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. Let's do the breakdown next. This piece is labeled guitar. Some of the other most popular aspects of the music is really distorted high uh, down the song for you and show you some of the individual parts okay this is actually guitar so we're going to turn this into I don't know I don't even know if we need that yeah, let's delete that and this now becomes breakdown I'm going to do it quite early in this episode normally I leave it to the end but spacey or ambient because that's where the influences just kind of mush together. Because that's where all the influences are in like Brian Eno's music and other things all just kind of mush together. Okay, uh, now the idea that I've got is to cut everything from that point onwards and reboot. So I'm going to bring in all the stems again. And... The idea here is track by track breakdown. They should line up. Yeah, there you go. Um, where, as he mentions something, you can hear what he's talking about. So, so that would be the main lead one. So I want to. So I want to break down the song for. You. So I want to break down the song for you and show you some of the individual parts. Okay, all of these need to be linked. So I'm going to group them together there, and now we're going to do a sly little sort of fade in from here song for you and show you some of the individual parts it first started with this synth melody that would be the main lead one that would be the main lead one okay i also gotta just drop the volume here a bit because it's gonna come on quite hot let's just take it down 9 db or so okay so i want to break down the song for you and show you some of the individual parts it first started with this synth melody. And then I brought some arpeggios into it. Yeah, that's it. Bring in those arpeggios, baby. Only one problem. The arps come in quite late. So now I'm going to have to find a point. Two, three. And then four. I brought some arpeggios okay. in. Okay, now I split everything from there onwards. And then I skip ahead to where the arps are. And once again, select everything and split it there. It should give me a pretty smooth transition from one. And then I brought some arpeggios into it. Okay, now the problem with this is that it's uh, 
It's giving us too much too parts. quickly. It first started with this synth melody. Okay. Okay, let's take out organ. Let's take out everything and just kind of let the thing breathe a bit. Parts. It first started with this synth melody. And then I brought some arpeggios into it. Okay, once again, a lot has come in, um, which is fine. I don't mind cheating, but it just seems a bit too much. And then I brought some arpeggios into it. Let us take this opportunity to also... And then I brought some arpeggios into it. To turn crossfade on so that when I cl click and drag, oh wait, no, we first want to there. Then I brought some arpeggios into it. That's nice. And there's two basses going on at the same time here. No, drums must definitely not happen yet. Uh, we just want this guy from here on. At the same time here. In time here. I think I've still got reverb on the master on the music bus. Let's take that down. Oh, I keep doing this. It's not on music, it's on music effects reverb. There you go. Okay, I don't mind remixing his track a bit, so. Lots of reasons. Basically, I've put a reason. So I want to break down the song for you and show you some of the individual parts. Okay, please do. It first started with this synth melody. Synth melody, got you. And then I brought some arpeggios into it. Yes. And there's two basses going on at the same time here. Or here. Bring the snare and stuff in, the percussion in. Yeah, this is how you do it. Cool. Next. The guitar is actually a sampled VST. The guitar is actually a sampled VST. Yeah, that's not the guitar, that is the main lead, which doesn't happen yet. We want the guitar coming in here. Uh, now we've got a problem again. So maybe I want to move the guitar up a bit to when it actually comes in. So this the string is kind of a real-time approach, this one. Strings here, yeah. The strings are an instrument called... The strings are an instrument called Manitron that I have used on practically all my stuff. practically all my stuff. The strings are an instrument called Manitron that I have used on practically all my stuff. Strings are an instrument called Manitron that I have used on practically all my stuff. on practically all my stuff. Let's just take the volume of the strings up at that point, should we? Don't we use the volume automation? All my stuff. Okay, what's next? The guitar is actually... No, we haven't got there yet. Uh, right, what have we got here? 
There's an organ pad that's doubling up the main melody and adding a little bit more texture. Okay. At this point, we want to bring, obviously, the organ in. And we'll Z that, open that up. Sure. Nope. To illustrate the organ, why don't we take the strings down? Take the organ up. Cool, that's good enough. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the guitar. There's a synth called Fritura, which is adding that brassy sound. Oh, I've got I've screwed something up. This is the main sound. And this is just the, the back end. All right, then I'm going to have to delete that and uh, I guess it works out quite nicely. Okay, first let's unlink it. So I want to, is it you? Yeah, you need to unlink, ungroup. And we start with that, not that. Uh, Oh yeah, it's just because that's soloed. Boom. And this comes out here. Yeah. Down the song for you and show you some of the individual parts. It first started with this synth melody. We'll get the levels right later. Now, there's a piece called there's a part called Futura. Which there's is a, and, there, and there's even a little bit of the vocoder. The guitar is actually a, That's guitar. which is adding that brassy sound. Okay, so the feature actually starts here. Which is adding that brassy sound. Start right on that, right on that downbeat. Which is adding that brassy sound. Okay, take the organ down. So yeah, I'm doing this. I think the whole bass line needs to just come down a bit because it's kind of dominating everything. So I take the whole bass line and open up the volume layer and take it down a bit. In melody and adding. What is that? I love that. Actually a sample. And there's even a little bit of the vocoder in there. Vocoder in there, which is an instrument used a lot in Daft Punk. Futura, which is adding that brassy sound. Okay, the vocoder, actually I'm going to cheat the vocoder and bring it forward in time. So there should be one here. Three, four. VST. The guitar is actually a sampled VST. Okay, let's, let's undo all the cheating. I want the vocoder to go back where it was. There. The guitar is actually a sampled VST. a vocoder in there which is and there's a little bit of a vocoder the guitar is actually a sampled VST and there's a little bit of a vocoder in there which is an instrument used a lot in Daft Punk or Kraftwerk's music bit of a vocoder in there which is an and there's a little bit of a vote I've screwed it up again let's make sure I've got this in sync or craftworks music no, I'm not doing this 
myself any favors here, am I? Uh, Craftworks music. Here's how you tell if the whole thing is in sync or not. What I'm going to do is re import the stems here, set the tracks, and then. Years. <laughs> so. so it's one, two, three, and four, and the vocoder comes in the three. Tricky, huh? And there's Musical a little bit editing. of a vocoder in there, which is an instrument. Daft Punk or Craftworks music. Let's kill the bass here because it seems to kind of go on too long. Otherwise. But in Daft Punk or Craftworks music. There's a lot we can kill here, actually. Let's do a, a general cut of everything. Right before the vocoder comes in. There we go. Splits all. And now I'll mute all. Oops, that's not muting all. Yeah. Instrument used a lot in Daft Punk or Craftworks music. Something still playing. Yes. Yeah. In Daft Punk or Craftworks What's music. music. That's better because now we've got a bit more. Impact. In Daft Punk or Craftworks music. <coughs> punk or Craftworks music. Punk or Craftworks music. A vocoder in there, which is an instrument used a lot, a lot in Daft Punk or Craftworks music. Let's keep one thing going, which is just the, the Lind drums. Or Craftworks music. Works music. Let's keep one more melodic element going. It's music. No, no. All of you unlink and just you go forward. It's music. No, you're too high. <laughs> Sorry, mate. You're too high. Sorry, you can't come in. Link or Craftworks music. Nice little delay there. Cool. Link or Craft. Now that might be a good opportunity to split. Um, it's a nice, feels nice to end it. There. Or Craftworks music. And we can restart with the drum section. Okay, I'm going to call it the call it quits for the day, um, and do the promo video. So that's where I arpeggios into it, and then I brought some arpeggios into it yeah that's very nice the strings are an instrument called manitron that i have used distorted like that i wish if i could play guitar properly i would have a lot more fun doing this kind of <laughs> uh there's a moment here where he's like the guitar, yeah. the guitar is actually a sampled vst just that final clip where he's like, I wish I could play guitar. Yeah, that's another aspect that I wish if I could play guitar properly. If I could play guitar properly. That I wish if I could play guitar. That I wish if I could play guitar properly. I wish if I could play guitar pro guitar properly. I would see. I wish if I could play guitar bar properly. I wish if I could play. I wish if I could play guitar properly. I would have a lot more fun doing this kind of music. And there's a little bit Give of me a, a call, bro. I'm here. I just got Guitar Rig 6 and it is sounding dope. What I like most about it isn't just obviously the sounds are great. It's the fact that you can search them easily. Like, because I've got a GT6, which is an old Boss multi effects pedal, like on the floor. And uh, it's like banks of four. So if you want to find something, it's like next bank, select one, two, three, four. Next bank, select one, two, three, four. Next bank. I don't have time to like write out all the patches and besides I don't think the sounds are worth it. GT6, use your keyboard. Just like search for hair metal or metal and it will give you like 20 patches that you know are going to sound better than the GT6 anyway. So as much as I'm uh, reluctant as a guitar guy to switch over to computer based modeling, it really is quite superior and um, nothing, nothing gets missed, nothing goes missing, nothing gets lost using computer. Man. Craftworks music. 
Okay, Craftwick. The top, the top. Which I which I played slightly differently each time there was a the the sixteen bar pass through because I I think this is the most interesting part in the discussion actually. I'm just gonna put a pin in this. So this song that uh, Discovery uh, started with the the main melody that's heard off the top after the and and then I like that melody so much I just copied it over a couple of times and had it just layer upon itself using different instruments to give it some new textures. The next thing that came after that was the bass line, which was written, which was, was the bass line, was the bass line. Okay, let's see if we can cut this piece together. So. The bass line, which was the bass line written, was... Which, the bass line was written which was baseline was okay where are we that intro which we don't want we want stems let's get all the stems back in here thank you separate tracks now we want to forward them all link them all up oops group them all up to where the bass starts okay was written which was which was the baseline which i played slightly differently each the the bass line was played. written, which was, which was the bass line, which I played slightly differently. Played. Okay, the bass line was. Line was played slightly differently each time there was a the the sixteen bar pass through because time there was a the the sixteen bar pass through because. I couldn't remember what I had played the time because I couldn't remember what I had because I couldn't remember what I had played the time before or and I wasn't before the time before and the time before that's cool okay the bass line is the most so I was just playing it from beginning to end in real time and hopefully I didn't make a mistake Let's get the Lindrum in there. I can see we've already done all of this. Um, I was writing it and playing it at the same time, and hopefully I didn't make a mistake. I was writing it and playing it at the same time, and playing it at the same time. And this is actually a way they used to do it in the 70s before they had sequencers. They had to play all the parts in real time on real instruments. And if they messed up, they had to go back to the beginning and do it again. But there is something to be said for playing the song from beginning to end and really kind of hearing how the whole thing sounds as it's, as it's being composed, you know, as it goes along. Cool. So I think we've got an angle for this guy. He's kind of uh, a little bit older. I think he was born in the 70s based on our chat and so we can kind of frame him as um, a dude who was around before computers it, and playing it <laughs> take didn't make a mistake use what I'm doing is fetching a laugh which is always useful mistake <laughs> Show, and hope showing vulnerability is endearing when listening to a radio show or whatever, you want to encourage people to show their vulnerability. Make a mistake. We <laughs> hmm. might actually want to just uh, bring all of the baseline stuff to later because. The baseline. All right. Then two, three, four, one. The baseline was played slightly differently each time because. I couldn't remember what I had played the time before. So I was just playing it 
from beginning to end in real time and hopefully didn't make a mistake. So I was just playing it from beginning to end in real time and hopefully didn't make a mistake. <laughs> I was writing it and playing it at the same time. And this is actually a way they used to do it in the 70s before they had sequencers. They had to play all the parts in real time on real instruments. And if they messed up, they had to go back to the beginning and do it again. But there is something to be... Add something else there, the main lead. Now let's bring the lead in last. What do you want is a uh, let's bring the vocoder in. Um and the ops, yeah, the ops are good here. Good. I have to go back to the beginning and do it again. Instruments. And if they messed up, they had to go back to the beginning and do it again. Code is a bit loud. In the beginning and do it again. But there is something to be said for playing the song from beginning to end and really kind of hearing how the whole thing sounds as it's as it's being composed, you know, as it goes along. I've played drums on anything in years. <laughs> so why don't we yeah just segue straight into the drums? That's a good idea. Cool. All right, so this might not be the most action recorded. I can just like hit a button, you know, as it goes along. Well, it's funny. Well, it's funny. Drums is my first instrument, but I didn't play. I haven't played drums on. Drums is my first instrument. Drums is my first. In drums is my first instrument, but I didn't. Okay. Drums. Drums is my first instrument, but I... I've got a moment where I mention the snare. That's here. So up till halfway through the song, I'm using a Lynn drum machine for the bass, uh, for the kick, and for the clap sounds. But then I really wanted this next level to come in with the snare. So I have this huge, huge snare drum. No, actually, let's save that for... Um... The after story because I can't replicate it in the studio the little studio there are no actual live drums on this because I wanted to have the authentic 80s drum sound which means the bass line was played slightly differently each time because I couldn't remember what I had played the time before so I was just playing it from beginning to end in real time and hopefully didn't make a mistake. <laughs> I was writing it and playing it at the same time. And this is actually a way they used to do it in the 70s before they had sequencers. They had to play all the parts in real time on real instruments. And if they messed up, they had to go back to the beginning and do it again. Good enough. But there is something to be said for playing the song from beginning to end and really kind of hearing how the whole thing sounds as it's as it's being composed, you know, as it goes along. In the 70s before okay. because I couldn't remember what I had played the time before. So I was so I was just playing it from beginning to end in real time and hopefully didn't make a mistake. <laughs> That's cool. All right. We've got a we've got a working No, we just need to lock that. Okay. Cool. I think we're gonna end the stream and start doing some of the sort of promotional balancing and stuff. So please, please lock. Thank you. Why do you bring up the lock settings every time? Time selection, yes, there. That's right. Uh, lock, unlock, yeah. 
cool. That's about it for the stream. You got the idea of how I'm doing this. It's very tight, a musical, well-timed sort of uh, editing process, which is bringing this composer's uh, interview audio to life. And uh, yeah, the focus is on creating a listening experience and not necessarily, um, you know, uh, the, the, a high-profile guest or anything like that. This is about the audio on its own, regardless of who's speaking. It's the aim of the show, at least. So yeah, thanks for tuning in if you tuned in, and otherwise check the video on YouTube when it's done. And this is How I Make Music, the editing of episode 84, which will be out on Wednesday. Peace out. <laughs>